Tropical climates tend to be located along the equator of planet Earth, whereas arid, dry climates are located along the tropics. Firstly, the reason why areas close to the equator are much warmer is all to do with the sun's energy and the fact that the sun's energy is more concentrated near the equator than at higher latitudes and that's down to the curvature of the earth. The curvature of the earth means that the sun's energy is spread out over a much greater area nearer the north and south pole meaning the sun's energy is less concentrated. That explains why warmer climates are found along the equator and cooler climates are located further away. The reason we have differences in rainfall, however, are all down to movements of air that we call the Global Atmospheric Circulation Model. In this model, as a result of the higher temperatures nearer the equator, that leads to warm air which rises a little bit like the warm air in a hot air balloon. So along the equator we've got bands of air which are rising. This air reaches high up in the atmosphere and then spreads out sideways before sinking back down to planet Earth. Now, when that air sinks back down, it does that at around 30 degrees north and south of the equator, creating a band of high pressure along the two tropics. Areas of high pressure experience low amounts of rainfall and cloud cover. So we end up with a lot of heavy rain along the equator but dry conditions where that air is sinking down at the tropics. When that air that is sinking reaches the Earth's surface, some of the air heads northwards and southwards towards the two poles. Some of it returns back towards the equator, and that creates the first cell that we call the Hadley cell, which is in between the equator and the two tropics. When that air returns back to Earth, some of it does go towards the poles, and that meets air which is coming from the poles in the direction of the equator. Because the sun's energy is less concentrated at the two poles, um, it is an area of high pressure. The two air masses coming from the Hadley cell and from the north and south pole do meet each other, and they force each other upwards at around 60 degrees north and south. That movement of air, of air kind of loops back round at the north and the south pole, creating the polar cell. And in between that, we've got the feral cell. This leads to bands of high and low pressure at various points across planet Earth. So at the equator, we've got an area of low pressure. At the tropics, an area of high pressure. And then another area of low pressure. And then at the very far north and south pole, another area of high pressure. This leads to bands of clouds and rain and also areas of Earth where there are very dry conditions as a result of high pressure bands. So this is why we've got rainforests at the equator where the sun's energy is concentrated and where air is rising leading to rainfall. Whereas at the tropics, we've got air sinking. So we have high pressure that leads to the distribution of deserts. Air also moves from high to low pressure, and that causes wind patterns across the world. So you can see wind is moving from the tropics to the equator, and they're called the trade winds. We've also got winds going from the tropics towards the 60 degrees north and 60 degrees south areas. That's creating the westerlies. We've also got polar easterlies near the North and South Pole. Because of the Coriolis force, the force of the Earth's rotation, that causes the winds to curve. So they curve to the right in the Northern Hemisphere, and in the Southern Hemisphere, the winds curve to the left. The winds do distribute heat and moisture from one place to another, and that also contributes to the climate patterns we see around the world.